If you've been with me for the last week or two, I'm in the midst of a series entitled, It's On. Somebody shout, It's On. It's not just a statement, but a commitment to taking your life. You should be able to finish this by before me. From expectation, when I say it's on, it's not just a statement, but it is a commitment to take your life from expectation to what? Execution. From expectation to what? Execution. See, I got a question for three people, and don't be shy. Who expecting something? Uh, I'm in the wrong church this morning. Who's expecting something? Who expecting God to do exceeding and abundant? Who's expecting God to open a door for you before the year is over? Who's expecting to be blessed? You ought to just shout, I expect. Now, did you catch that? The whole room shouted, I expect. But if I was to ask the question, who's going to execute? Who going to do your part so God can do his part? Who going to put a plan together to make sure what you expecting you see manifest? No, I'm not just going to be at expectation. I'm going to be at execution. Here's a definition I gave you a week ago. I speak God problems. What are God problems? God problems are when, my, when God's provisions exceed my plans. God problems are when God's provisions exceeds my plan. Let me make that real simple for three of y'all. That's when God do more than I ever expected. I'm going to have church by myself right there. I want to speak over your life that in 2024, whatever plan you think you got, God going to crash that plan, not with a problem, but with overflow. I thought that's one person right there. I speak that if you said you was going to get a promotion next year, God going to give you multiple promotions and multiple options. Put some scripture on it. God will do exceeding, abundant, above all you could ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. I got enough regular people problems. I speak God problems. Oh my God, it is when God's provisions exceed your plans. And I told you last week that if the enemy cannot stop you from being saved, he will attempt to distort how you see. That if the enemy cannot stop you from being saved, he will try to distort how you see. Because it's a sad thing to be saved but can't see nothing. And the devil knows he cannot stop God from blessing you, so he tries his best to blind you. Michael, he know he can't stop God from blessing you. You want to know why the devil can't stand you? Devil can't stand you because he know you a trip just like you know you a trip. And he's sitting in hell trying to figure out. You don't see all the dumb stuff they did, but God has a way of reaching, be looking beyond my faults and still blessing me at my knees. See, there's two types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all feel entitled to a blessing, then the, the other person sitting there like, I'm just grateful he's still blessing. Because the truth of the matter is, they don't have to lie on me. I know enough about me. Have you ever been blessed and before you shouted, you had to figure out if God really meant to give it to you? Because you sitting there like, hey, before I shout, you sure this for me? Because I know you saw what I did last month, but God got a way of blessing folk who people don't think deserve it because God knows if I bless my child, it ain't a devil in hell that can block their blessing. I'm blessed. You ought to shout, bless. The devil knows he cannot stop God from blessing you. So what does he do? He blinds you. And I need your help. Now, if you took good notes last week, I want you to look at your notes. And when I make a statement, I want you to say it loud so you can make everybody on your row think you're way smarter than them, okay? Right, so this is what we're going to do. Let's get real arrogant right here. Find your notes, all right? Get real arrogant. And I want you to stick your nose up at them because they don't know what I'm about to say. So the devil tries to blind you in three areas. Number one, he tries to blind you from seeing your... Ooh, look at you taking notes, boy, from seeing your seasons right. He does not want you to see your seasons right. Can I free you? Seasons have me tripping. You ain't got to say amen. I say amen to myself. Seasons be having me tripping, okay? Am I the only person who wake up and turn on the heat? 
But then by the time I get off work, got to turn on the air. Am I the only person who wake up and have to put a whole coat on? But then by the time I get off work, I'll be taking coats and shirts off. I'm confused because it's November, right? It's November. That means this is win is this winter. What is this called? This is called fall, right? But here's why I'm tripping. Why is it 30 at 6 a.m.? Then 76 at 6 p.m. All right. I don't know how. I don't know how to view this season. I'm trying to adjust to the season, but it feels like every time I adjust to it, it adjusts back to me. So I'm in what? What is this? The fall? All right. So we just came out of what? Summer. We are in. We getting ready to go into. You're slow, but you're worth waiting on, okay? We just got out of. We are in. We are about to go to, which means fall has a little bit of the old season and a little bit of the new season. And if you stuck on the old season, you're going to misdiagnose your current season. But if you looking too far ahead to your new season, you're going to miss the blessing in your current season. Which is why the devil blinds you because he'd rather have you complaining versus just making an adjustment. I'm not preaching to everybody. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who kind of confused right now because you feel blessed, but you also stressed. You happy, but you don't know why you irritated. You praying more than you ever prayed, but cussed a little bit this week too. Why? Because I'm stuck in between seasons. But I believe that if God bless me, I'll be able to see my... <laughs> my seasons. Right. He tries to blind you to your seasons. He wants to blind you from three areas. Number one, seeing your seasons right. All right, all, saints, be bold. Number two, from seeing. Pete, I be doing a good job. Oh, man, look at y'all. People, right? Number three, from seeing. And I told you once before, you might want to put this in your notes if you didn't already. You will never have right outcomes with wrong outlooks. Yeah, you will never have right outcomes with that with having wrong outlooks. And I told you there are three dangers to living without vision. Number one, slowlessness, stumbling, and suffering. So instead of praying for God to do something, I might need to pray that I can see something. I'm finna run, forget y'all. Instead of praying, Lord, do it, you might need to say, Lord, help me see it. Because what if I told you, you asking God to do what he's already done? And the problem is he ain't did it. The problem is you can't. I'm preaching if y'all have received this, because cause, cause I need you to catch this. I want to see something. So my prayer, and you ain't got to receive this, for 2024 is, Lord, help me to see Lord, you might want to put that in your notes for 2024. Lord, open my eyes. See, y'all slow, but I'm going to preach for y'all. See, you see things differently at 40 that you didn't see at 25 and 30. See, at 25 and 30, all I wanted was a bag. I just wanted a bag. I wanted to be blessed. I just wanted to win. I wanted to be successful. Now that I done hit 40, I realize now I don't necessarily need a new bag if I learn how to see my current back. Y'all ain't, ain't gotta see me, but it's cool. Why PMJ? I'm praying, Lord, open my eyes. Help me see. And I gotta preach and I pray, Father, y'all can receive this because there's a problem when people who got sight hang with blind people. Mm, I'm not talking about literally, I'm talking about spiritually because I've discovered when people who can see hang with people who are blind, the conversations don't align. Oh, that was a bar and three of y'all missed it right there. When people who can see hang with people who are blind, the conversations don't align. See, when people can see, you be riding by empty buildings seeing businesses, trying to have future talk with people who can only see condemned spaces. This is why you can't tell your vision to everybody. Because when people with vision 
Start talking to people who are blind. They will talk you out of being blessed and don't realize we just see stuff on two different. I'm preaching to three of y'all. That's why you got to be careful who you sit next to in church. But your neighbor looked up and sat next to the right person today. So just bump them and tell them, I see something. I see something. Tell them, I see something. I see something. I see angels guarding your car when you drive. I see blessings getting ready to overtake you. Tell them, I see you happy in the future. I see you walking in favor. Tell them, I don't have to know you, but baby, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see. That's, what, that's why you got to be careful. That's why you got to be careful because here's what I've been asking God. Put this in your notes, all right? Let me free you. Whenever I say put this in your notes, even if you're not going to write it, just put your head down and do this right here. All right, make me feel good, okay? Make me feel good, okay? Let's practice. Put this in your notes. You didn't do it. You, there, I see. You, you knew I was going to get you there. You, right there. All right, so everybody, we're going to wait on him. There he is. Are you ready? That boy, that's what I'm talking about. So put, put this in your notes, okay? Put, put this in. I forgot, I forgot what I was going to say. Hold on. Okay, there it is. All right. Put this in your notes, all right? I've been asking God before this year is out, where are my blind spots? That's heavy. Because if you're not careful, you're going to leave Rock City Church so inspired <laughs> you're going to crash because you can't switch lanes improperly. Okay, I'm going to say this. We on Valleydale now, so y'all y'all, y'all, y'all on another level. All right, so, so some of y'all cars advance. When you get ready to switch lanes, you ain't even look. It just, if it's something next to you, your seat start vibrating. Who got one of them cars? Anybody? Or if you try to get over, I, I was in one of my members' car the other day, and, and they don't even drive. They just press cruise control, and the car be driving by itself. It get over by itself. If they want to get over, I never saw them look. They looked at their mirror, and it had a red light by it or something like that, and they knew not to turn. Okay, God bless all y'all rich saints. But to everybody who from Inslee like me, our car didn't have none of that. If you wanted to switch lanes, you have. Oh, so y- y'all gonna leave me by myself? I'm going to the parking lot after church, and everybody who ain't got no brand new car, I'm gonna take a pit. No, you know what you had to do. If you wanted to switch lanes, you just couldn't switch, or you would. Say, so, 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 what you want to do? This is what you do. First thing you do is check your mirror, right? You check your mirror. But here's the problem with the mirror. The mirror is limited perception. Y'all, are y'all following me? The mirror is limited perception, meaning the mirror will show me what's behind me, but it never shows me what's next to me. And some of y'all keep crashing, not because of what's chasing you, but because of some of the folk who write. I had to take a laugh on that one. That's why I'm praying for you because I want to prophesy over your life. The reason you've been frustrated and you've been feeling like God taking you in a direction that you didn't even go to school for is because God is anointing you in this season to switch lanes. But you can't switch lanes without checking. Without, without checking. My, 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 my son, my baby of the big three, I, I look at my kids in two phases. The big boys, 16, 15, 14, then I got the babies, they nine and six, okay? I saw the baby of the big boys, Mason, played freshman ball last year, had a great year. So the coach says, no, we're moving him to DB uh, on varsity. We're going to move him to DB. I said, cool, so we're going back to safety. So I'm out, you know, I ain't get into my 12th grade year. So it's looking like he may get some reps or he may be on the second team or something like that. So I'm out. I'm my boy's biggest fan. When I tell you, I'm loud at the football game, screaming, hollering, I'm getting the parents, all the parents stand up, parents, I'm going berserk. They gonna hear me, they gonna hear their daddy in them stands. I go in Mace's room, Mace, Mace, coach said he putting you on defense, you got a chance to play a little bit, boy, how you feel? And Mace preached a message in one sentence that I almost called him my pastor. Mace, I thought Mace was gonna be like, what? May said, all right, cool. I was like, okay. He said, no, I'm happy. <laughs> I just got to shift my mind. 
So now I'm looking at my 14-year-old like, like, what you mean? He said, Dad, when you play offense, that's one mindset, you know. I was playing receiver, so the whole year I've been, I, I, I. He said, if I'm going to go back to defense, I got to reignite that dog in me. I got I to get this tough mindset. And it made me think about how many people in my church and online keep trying to go into new seasons with old mindsets. No. For the next 30 days, I'm shifting my mind. Because how you thought in your last season may not work for where God's taking you in your new season. See, I want to speak by faith. God's sending you money this time. You got to shift your mind so you don't blow the new blessing like you blew the... Now look at you. Don't want to shout because you don't want people in your business. Can I get three people who ain't in witness protection to say, Pastor Mike, had I shifted my mind six months ago, I would be a whole lot further than I am right now. You ought to shout, shift! Mama, they don't know what that means. Who, who, who can drive a stick? Anybody? So, 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 see, y'all used to automatics. Let me free you. What God is sending you won't be automatic. Whenever God places something in your life, it requires a shift. Michael, it requires a shift. Two of my best members, young couple, was at the 9 a.m. service, and I walked up to them and they said, Pastor Mike, we want to give you our wedding invitation. We getting ready to get married. And I looked at both of them before I said congratulations, said, have y'all shifted? No. I said, no, you can't wait till you put the dress on and put the ring on to start talking about now my wife. No, no, in this moment, you got to start the process a shift, y'all missed it. A shift. I looked at him and said, You ready to shift? I said, No, stuff you did as a boyfriend, you can't do as a husband. It's a different mindset now. No, you the last to eat. You the last to get J's. You the last to make sure you got stuff. That requires a shift. And some of y'all are going to be miserable in your relationships, not because you're not dating good looking people, you dating people who don't know how to. Yeah. I got a shift on me. I said it once and I say it again. What is a shift? A shift spiritually means I got gears, okay? First gear is how you start, okay? First gear. Y'all ready? Let's do it together. Put your hand on the steering wheel. Hand on the steering wheel, okay? Okay, hand on the steering wheel. Don't be hood with it. Look at y'all. Already leaning back. Sit up. Sit up. Hand on the steering wheel, right? Okay? All right, so you finna go in first, okay? So you put one foot on the gas, one foot on the clutch, all right? And you got to ease off. Okay, but see, when you first start, your start is rocky. Rocky starts come with shift. Pastor Mike, this season been rough. That means you... So, so you in first. So then once you get it, e e e e e e But the problem is first gear ain't meant to drive in. It's meant to what? Start in. Once you come out of first, feet, hands, you shift to second. Now second lets you get your momentum. And then the goal is to get to third, boom, boom. Then you shift again, go to fourth, boom, boom. Then you shift again and go to where? Fifth, boom, boom. Once you kind of get to fifth, you're kind of doing your thing now. But you know what I discovered? Most of us burn the clutch how do you burn a clutch? Staying in a certain gear longer than the speed that you're currently going. I can't do 30 in first. Conversely, I can't do 60 in third. And many of you are moving faster than your capacity is shifting. That's why your pastor not doing nothing. I haven't done a concert in almost three months, canceled my whole schedule. Every Wednesday night, I'm meeting with team leads and we're walking through what we can do better. Okay, what did we do here? So how did the parking go this week? So tell me, how did children go to this? Pastor Mike, it was a long line. We think we need more check-in stations, okay? We bought four new check-in stations. Did it go a little smoother this week? Okay, so every week, I'm trying to make sure this is heavy. Not only am I shifting, 
<laughs> but we shifting. Because I discovered if you shifting and your crew ain't shifting with you. I, y'all, y'all, I got to stop. Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. So I'm praying, Lord, open my eyes. The person I love so much about this in the Bible is situated and acculturated in the book of Judges. His name is Gideon. Ooh, Gideon is a cold brother because God calls Gideon. When we see Gideon in Judges chapter 6 verse 12, Judges chapter 6 verse 12 opens by saying, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, O mighty warrior. We got to pause and parenthetically digress. Why PMJ? Because you don't know why the angel is talking to him. The children of Israel are in bondage. They are in bondage not because God could not protect them, but because they kept doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Michael, they kept doing evil in the sight of the Lord. I'm going to say this, and only three of y'all going to receive this. It's one thing to do evil on the low. But it's jacked up when you bold enough to be doing your dirt in front of God. Okay, I, I'm going to always preach about my life and my mistakes so you can see ain't nothing wrong with you. I'm going to preach about my kids so you can see if my kid's crazy, your kids can be crazy too, okay? So, so Mike, that's, that's my middle, middle, oh, middle of the top three. He's 15, right? Mike uh, has anxiety, spectrum of autism, all that good stuff. All right, so Mike, Mike, one of the most respectful children we got. Mike, if you tell Mike to do something, it's done. I don't have to check behind him. But one day we get on Mike nerves, right? Mama fussing, you're going to grow up, you're going to do certain stuff. Stuff right, you're gonna do some stuff. So then, normally, that's when I step in and be like, Hey, come here, come here, come here. She fussing, man. Just come on, I got you, man. You, you gotta do better. I try to soften it, but this day I was on one too. And we're not gonna baby you in 24 months. You in college, what you gonna do, buddy? You gotta do so and so, so and so. So Mike said, Yes, sir. Then he looked at my wife and was like, Yes, ma'am. Then all of a sudden, Mike opens the front door, goes and stands on the front porch, and yells, F, F. He's cussing. He, he's cussing. F, F. Mike loses it, okay? But he's so respectful, he looks at me and says, yes, sir. He goes outside on the front porch and yells, F, F. It's only one problem. My daddy getting out the car. So Mike's screaming, F. My dad look at him and say, well, all right then. All right? All right don't, don't, don't judge my baby. Don't sit in here like you ain't went to your room and then cuss your mom in the mouth. Can I get a what, what? You in your room. Ah, ah. But guess what? I don't, hear me. Whatever he said, I'm going to get with him on that. But I at least like the fact that he wasn't bold enough to do it in my face. Had he did that in my face, this hand, and this hand would have had a praise session. But, but hear me, but, but the children of Israel are so bold, they doing it in front of God. So what does God do? God gives them over to the Midianites. Midian, to the Midianites. Now what's crazy, the Midianites are descendants of Abraham. The children of Israel are descendants of Abraham's. So he do not give them over to foreigners. He let his family ruin them. These are two tribes that are related fighting each other. They are now impoverished to the Midianites. But what happens? Look at verse 6. This is enough to tear the church out. Verse 6 literally says, Judges, Midian so impoverished, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. That's why I'm supposed to tear the church up right there, bro. I'm, I'm supposed to tear the church up right there. Oh, my granddaddy, Bishop Calvin Woods, if he was here right now, he would say, that's where you go to church. I'm supposed to stand there. I'm supposed to look at you and say, I'm supposed to stand behind the podium right there, right? And I'm supposed to say, I don't know what you've been going through. But I stopped by here to tell somebody that even when times get rough, all you got to do is cry out to the Lord. And this is why so many Christians are turning their back on God. It's because we condition a generation of believers to think if you scream loud enough, God will show up. God is not a genie in a bottle. 
Michael, every real mother know that when you're trying to train your baby to sleep in their own bed, you have to endure nights of screaming, crying. Now, if you let that scream get to you and you keep running in there, picking them up, putting them back in the bed, now that baby going to be nine years old, still sleeping in between y'all. So every now and then you got to hear the cry, but no, the cry is for their... They, I'm going to let you go home. They cry out to God. Now, I want to free you. I'm in verse 6. Somebody say 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 6, they cry out to God. Judges chapter 6, verse 12, God starts dealing with the insecurity in their answer. That was heavy and you missed it. Can I free you real quickly? Some of us don't read the Bible right because we don't understand the timing of the Scripture. Go to verse 6. When you see verse 6 and then you see that God does something to them in verse 12, you think because it took you three minutes to read it, all that happened at the same time. So in your mind, you hear they cried out to God. And then you, you subconsciously say, and then the Lord showed up. Because we've been telling you for years when praises go up, blessings come down. But can I free you? In between verse 6 and verse 12, put this in your notes, is seven years. <laughs> yeah. In between verse 6 and verse 12 is seven years. Can I make it make sense? In November of 2023, he or she cried out to God. In November of 2030, he answered. Now, I'm finna say something that nobody gonna agree with. It ain't gonna get no shouts, because as a generation, we're taught to shout on foolishness and sit on substance. So I don't really care if you shout or not. I'm gonna do what God told me to do. I wanna tell you something no preacher's probably ever told you. Just because you call him, don't mean he gonna answer. Can I free you? Because sometimes when you call God, God's answer is in his absence. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Y'all miss what? Do I need to say that again? Sometimes his answer, Michael, is in his absence. I, I need you to catch what I'm telling you right here. Because God waits seven years to talk back. I'm, I'm finna free you. I'm finna run. The children of Israel call God year one. No response. <laughs> Year two, no response. Year three, no response. Let's go back. That means every year that they don't get a response, their circumstance gets worse. So I don't want you to view this scripture like God not just answering them. I want you to view it like God ain't talking and they still getting whooped. Imagine going to church. I really want to paint this picture. You come to church today. Bravis and Terrell in the worship department get good worship. I preach. You sit in the pew and say, Lord, I need you to bless me. And you leave here feeling good. And God don't say nothing till 2030. Mm -mm. And they're like, God, we need you, God. Step in, God. And here's what messed me up. I'm going to have church by myself. Because in verse 12, I'm going to see if you catch it. Verse 12 says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, you didn't catch it. I'm going to say it again. The children of Israel cried to God. Not only does God take seven years, he don't even reply to them. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. They over here screaming. God is in heaven. God looks at them, asks for something does not reply to them. Instead, he goes and talks to the answer. Okay, you're going to miss it. Because three of y'all frustrated with God because you've been praying for something and you ain't heard back from God. What if God not talking to you because he's busy talking to your solution? I thought somebody was going to have church with me right here. So you on your current job saying you hate it. 
but God won't talk back to you on your current job because he at your future job talking to your supervisor, telling your supervisor you need to create another position. Just because God ain't talking to you don't mean God ain't working it out. Can I preach to five folk who've been frustrated the last six weeks and tell you stop tripping? God is working it out. I dare you to reach over that neighbor you sat next to a hater, slap him a high five and shout, he's working it out. Your next season is already worked out. Your future is already worked out. Your next deal is already worked out. Your next tuition payment is already. You ought to jump up, sit down, and shout, he's working it. <laughs> He's working it out. Yeah, he's working it out. He's, my, my boys get frustrated sometimes because they'll text me, right? They'll text me, especially Xander. That's my oldest. He's 16. He's driving now. All right, so he'll just text out the blue, Dad, can I have some gas money? I was going through our text thread the other day. I get emotional, and I just go through all my boys' text thread, my baby, all our text threads, and we just look at them, and I just think about how they've been growing, and yada, yada, yada. So I go through the text thread. I got a long line of, Dad, can I get some gas money? Dad. But this is what I discovered. Most of the texts, all the bubbles are on his side. I rarely text back, Okay. I just hit his cash app. Y'all gonna hit it. You're gonna catch this in a minute, all right? If I got the supply, a conversation ain't necessary. Some of y'all stuck because you wait on a reply. When grandmama said, just turn it over to. All right, I, I, gotta, I gotta go. But for the next 30 seconds, I want you to thank God for what he's working out for you that you don't even know about yet. That eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. You ought to touch three people and tell them he's working it out. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Who got a problem? Israel. Who's the answer? Gideon. The only problem is, Mike, Gideon, uh-oh, Gideon is insecure. You got to catch this. Gideon is insecure. Who's the answer? Gideon. Yeah, you see. Who's the answer? Gideon. Okay, I need you to understand. Who's the answer? Gideon. Y'all don't get it yet. Who's the answer? Okay, so the children of Israel are crying, asking God to get them out. They probably thought God was going to get them out. But God cannot break a law. See, because the Bible is broke down into three dispensations. Old Testament is the dispensation of God, okay? The, 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 the New, Testament, New, New Testament is the dispensation of Jesus. Jesus goes up, all right? Then the Holy Spirit comes down. So the latter part of the New Testament is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. God can't come back till the rapture. So God can't come get them out. So God has to roam the earth and find an answer. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say this. Only seven of y'all gonna jump up and receive it, but you gotta be careful when you receive this because you're gonna leave here never thinking about yourself the same. Do you wanna know why you have so many problems? Because you are an answer. Y'all didn't catch that. All right, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to think about your circle. And it seems like out of your whole circle, you always the one catching hell. You want to know why? Because no disrespect to your circle, but one of y'all going to be the answer to everybody's problem. And so the devil got a sneak peek of your anointing and realized if I ever let them become who God called them to be, they not just going to fix their problems. They gonna fix everybody problem around. Your family gonna be blessed. Your friends gonna be blessed. I'm gonna say this, the devil better not never let me get some money. I'm gonna fix everybody. I would tell you to high five your neighbor, but I don't know if they got enough faith and we can't play with this. So just high five yourself and say, I'm the answer, baby. 
Nah, you sitting in here too quiet. You ought to shout, I'm the answer, baby. That's why the devil trying to drive me crazy, because I'm the answer. That's why folk don't know if they like me, love me, or hate me, because I am the answer. And God put me in your life so I can help you solve. I'm the answer. No, I'm the answer. I'm the answer. Yeah, you better stop chasing people who treat you like you're a problem. No, I'm the answer. I'm the answer. Gideon is the answer and don't even know it. Ooh, he the answer. Baby girl, he the answer and don't even know it. When we find Gideon, he hiding. God looks at him, I'm finna run. And God has to first deal with the insecurities within the answer. Mm -mm. Y'all don't get it. 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 He's dealing with all these insecurities. And God rolls up on him. And I'm trying not to run. I'm trying to be dignified, y'all. I'm trying to pace myself. Nine o'clock was good. I got this service. As soon as we get out of church, I got to run to the airport. I'm doing uh, North Carolina A&T homecoming and all this stuff. So I'm trying to be dignified. But y'all got to pray for me. I only know one gear. That's 100. Because this next verse told me up. The angel of the Lord looks at Gideon, who's a farmer. Y'all don't get it. Gideon ain't never fought a day in his life. Gideon don't want no smoke. Gideon ain't got no hands. Gideon ain't got no heat. All Gideon got is wheat. And the angel rolls up on Gideon and says, the Lord mm, is with you, watch this, you mighty warrior. I'm in the wrong church. Y'all done got a new building and started acting brand new. I can't stand y'all. No, no, y'all got to catch this now because the NIV version says mighty warrior. Hmm? The NASB version says valiant warrior, Michael. The New King James version says mighty man of valor. The NLT says mighty hero. What's my issue with all of them? My issue with all of them is that nothing in his life has proven that he's any of that. When I get to heaven and God see me, God gonna be like, I know that ain't Mike. I'm a bit, David gonna be like, yes it is. John gonna be like, that fool done made it up here. And God gonna be like, hey, hey, Michael, Archangel, bring him here. And I'm gonna walk in VIP, right? And everybody gonna be looking at me. David gonna be sitting over there on the piano. He gonna head nod. I'm like, what's up, boy? John gonna be sitting at this table. Matthew, Mark, Luke gonna be sitting right there. A little bit jealous, cause they trying to figure out how I got in. And instead of me sitting at this table, God gonna be like, woo, woo. Woo! And I'm gonna walk over to God's table. He's gonna be like, Mike, what's up, boy? I'm gonna be like, what's up, man? You good? You good? You good? Man, how you like it up here, man? This crazy. This, this crazy right here. Clouds and look at the street paid with gold. I started to put that in my pocket real quick, boy. That crazy, ain't it, boy? Man, look at this. You see that? Look at these wings in this thing. You see these wings they gave me? I was walking by old boy. He had a crown, but my crown got all these juice. You done dripped your boy out in heaven, and God gonna be like, your word, 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 word. I'm gonna be like, man, I got one question for you though, God. He gonna be like, what's up? How you call Gideon a warrior when his whole life he didn't do nothing but worry? He is currently running from a fight. Why you call him a warrior? God gonna look like, peep this, peep, 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 peep this. Yeah, so this is th what I tend to do throughout the Bible, but you missed it. I'm like, what, what, run, run game, God. God going to be like, I like, I like to call people what they not. Watch this. Currently. Because whenever I call you something that you are not currently, I'm really telling you what you're going to be prophetically. Mm. Mm, I'm strapped in. I got excited. Whenever I call you something that you're not currently, 
is because I'm calling you something that you're about to be prophetically, which means you may not be a warrior today, but if you trust me, I'm going to make you what you never thought you would ever. I, I don't know who you sitting next to, but just look at them and say, call me something, please. Look back at them and say, I call you blessed. I call you favored. Uh-oh, wait, 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 wait. You made a mistake because that person just called you blessed. That person just called you favor, and all you did was clap, which means you ain't receive it. Because whenever somebody speaks something over your life, you got to respond by saying, I call you millionaire. I, I call you successful entrepreneur. I call you happily married. I call you a doctor's and a master's degree. Can we take 30 seconds to call your neighbor something real quick? I need you to call them something. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it, I receive it. I need a hundred people in the comments to call me something, right? Blessed and highly favored. Head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Call me some. Grandmama said it ain't what they call you. It's what you answer to. Now let me let me put you on game. I'm gonna let you go. I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Brad is them song all my time, and, and I'm gonna get my time. Forget y'all. All right. So 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 let me free you. Let me free you. I'm gonna put you on game real quick. Y'all fussing? Okay, cool. Y'all fussing? I just want you to roll up on them, lady. I'm, I want, fellas, I'm gonna roll up on them. Hey, what you doing? Nothing. All right, cool. Yo, fine. Rich, good edges having, entrepreneur, multiple business owner, 900 credit score having, in the best shape of your life looking. Start calling them sudden. All of a sudden they're gonna look at you and say, stop playing. Why PMJ? I need somebody who has enough faith to call me. He looks at him. And he says, oh, mighty warrior, mm. oh, mighty warrior. This is what Dr. Darius Daniels taught me. It's called a quantum leap. It's called a quantum leap. This is crazy. What's a quantum leap, Pastor Mike? A quantum leap is when an explosive leap in your personal performance that puts you beyond the next logical step. It is a rejection of the notion that the only way to advance is through incremental improvement. A quantum leap means the logic says you should take step one, step two, and step three. But when you experience a quantum leap, you don't go from one to two. You go from one to six. And it may not be a leap year technically, but I prophesy it's going to be a leap year prophetically. That what you should have did two years ago, by the time this year is out, you get ready to leap some steps. Now, if you ain't got faith, you can sit there and be quiet. But everybody who got faith ought to start leaping. Like this is my leap year. This is my leap. When you go to work tomorrow, I don't want your neighbors or your co-workers to hate on you. So when you walk to your cubicle, when you leave here, I want you to go to Hoover and just walk by the car dealership and just... I want you to drive through your future, neighbor. It's two types of people on your road. One of y'all only gonna shout about it. But two of y'all finna put your faith on it. I dare you to shake your neighbor and say leap from no money to a whole lot of money. Leap from bad health to good health. 
This your leap year. This your leap year. All right. You remember that meme? No, that's my mood for the next six months. Because you may not see it. But even if it's just a little bit. See, I'm not going to shout when God do the big. But not shout when he do the small. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, it's a shift happening with me. All things have passed away. Hear me, hear me, hear me. And God is redeeming the time. That's called bloody baby girl. He's redeeming the time. So when you hear a preacher or you hear your grandmother say he's redeeming the time, he's not going to give you more time. Because redeem means to buy back. What he's saying is God's going to do more in the little time you got left. Then he's already done. What that mean, Pastor Mike? What that mean? That means if you didn't do half of what you wanted to do in 2023, your friends gonna start telling you in love, they not wrong, they just love you. They gonna say stuff like, it's cool, next year. I want you to look back at them and say, pause. 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 What, what you mean next year? Last time I checked, it was two good months left in this year. If my God died, took back the keys, and got up in three days, he could show out with 37 days. I'm going to say this and you ain't got to shout. I'm still believing he's going to do it this year. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I need you to high five five people and shout this year. God's going to do it. I said high five your neighbor and say neighbor. Believe. I got. I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to. I got to send him home. God rose up on Gideon. He rose up on Gideon, and he says, "Oh, valiant warrior." And Gideon, I, see, I, I want to have good church right here, but that's what's wrong with us. We go home shouting with no substance. Because verse 15 is what you came for. Look at this, it's on the screen. Gideon tells that angel, pardon me, Lord. Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I'm the lead, watch this. He a part of the weakest clique. And he the weakest one out the clique. Look at this. Look at verse 16. Nowhere in the entire Bible does God correct him. I'm finna free y'all. I'm finna free y'all. I'm finna free you. Because this is what your friends do. Man, I can't do that, man. People like us don't get to do stuff like that. And because you love them, you say stuff like, you right. No, for the rest of the year, don't even correct them. <laughs> Look back at them and say, yeah, you are weak. I release a seely anointing over you. Seely says, you know what? I may be broke. I may even be ugly. But I'm still here. Let me free you. Y'all don't think this was a leap for me? You don't think I had moments? Go back to verse 15. Of verse 15, God, how am I pay for this? You don't think I had days where I lay right there on the floor? And in my head, I could hear either my own thoughts or the devil just telling me, these folks are going to laugh you out of here. It got so bad for me, I had to open up and finally tell my staff. It was tormenting me. I had start believing, baby girl, that I was gonna get this building, never have the money to fix it, and end up losing it. Then we would end up back in Forestdale. I would just sit here and be like, God, come on, bro. 
come on. I would argue with God. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How many concerts can I do? Dang. And it started getting outrageous. Like, that's 217 concerts times. <laughs> Whoever had to start mapping stuff out. Now, if I sell 300 t-shirts at $25, I can get this money. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I've been doing right, but if I call old boy and just, you know, whoop de whoop, whoop de whoop, about three more times, I can we get this. Why are you laughing? You know what I'm talking about. That's your problem right there. No, I can call my folk, you know, we whoop, 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 whoop. Ladies, you laughing? You know, I can call old boy. He don't, he don't mind. I can get the bill paid. But there's something in you be like, trust God. Look at this. 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 He says, I'm the lowest in my family. And why is that important, Pastor Mike? Because God gives him a picture of who he can be. And whenever God gives you a picture of who you can be, it's, to, it's for you to develop a passion for it. I want to say that better. Whenever God gives you a picture of it, it's because he's trying to develop you a passion for it. Make that make sense. He calls you something that you're not to wake it up in you. Because it's not that you're not it. It's just dormant. Michael... And I need you to catch this. And many of us never execute the vision God has for us because we're afraid to be real about ourselves. I like Gideon. It's right there on the screen. Gideon literally says, man, I ain't nothing. How long are you going to lie to yourself? Can we have a very real moment in this room and online? I know you got to go. Listen to me. Have you ever told a lie so long you start believing it? I'm the only one, huh? He says, I'm the weakest out the group. And God tells him in verse 16, the Lord is with you. <laughs> verse 12, he says, the Lord is with you. You missed it because right there in verse 12, before he calls a mighty warrior, he gives him security. He says, the Lord is with you. And look at what he tells him. He says, I'm going to go home right there. Gideon says, okay, God, let's do this. If you are truly going to help me, throw verse 17 on the top wall. If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign. Come on, Lord. Prove to me that it's real. Y'all, it's so much I wish I could tell y'all, man. It's so much I wish I could tell y'all. This is called a fleece prayer. If I spell it wrong, I think it's F-L-E-E-C-E, -E -E, fleece prayer. I'm going to give you this quick version. Gideon says, I'm going to take this fleece, I'm going to take this towel, I'm going to put it on the ground. Make the towel wet, but make the ground dry. He wakes up in the morning and that happens. He comes back to God and says, all right, cool, but before I do it, I want another sign. <laughs> See, this real. He says, this time make the towel dry. Make the ground wet. Just show me a sign. But can I show you who needs a sign from God? <laughs> Let me show you why many of us don't get it. Watch this. If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign. Prove that it's really the Lord speaking to me. Look at the next verse. Verse 18, Leslie. Look what Gideon tells the angel. But don't go away until I come back and bring my offering. Gideon says, I will never ask something from God without giving God. And that's why with me, whenever I ask God for something, I sow a seed. 2009, I'm just a kid, 25 years old maybe, starting this little church. All I got in my pocket is roll quarters. 
I go to a church service and I hear Dr. R.A. Vernon preaching on what God's about to do. I'm sitting on the front row and everything he's preaching, I'm doing. It's thousands of pastors in this big room. And he's saying, God's getting ready to take somebody to another level. And one of y'all already blessed. You're blessing your city. You're loving people. You don't care about money. You and I'm sitting there and I'm in the front row. I'm like, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. And all these pastors was pulling out $1,000 and 10000 Ain't had that. I flew standby to get there, stayed at a motel the night before. All I had in my pocket was roll quarters. I walked up to the altar, put it in his hand. I said, hey, how you doing? I said, hey, I'm going to do this real fast. My name's Michael McClure. I said, you don't know me, but you're going to know me. And I put it in his hand, and I, he looked me in the eyes. I said, trust me. I said, everything you said was for me. I know it. I said, I, I can't stay the next two days. I ain't have enough money. I said, but I'm giving you this because I'm believing God for something. Then I left. That was September 2009. September 2009. By that December, people started coming to our church. By that January, we had a bill. And God, see, because I didn't want God to show me a sign before I came back with something. Even with this building, I didn't know this building was available. I would come in the lobby where y'all go to get the children. I, the realtor would let me sit there for five years. It was empty. I would call the realtor and say, anybody bought it yet? Nope. Can I go in there and work today? And I would go in there and write sermons. Go in there and write sermons. This past December, when we were virtual, I sold a seed into City of Truth in Kansas City. I heard their pastor say they had finally got a building. And I said, God, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. You can't get excited. And maybe, maybe, maybe I'm to blame in certain places because I so didn't want to be a preacher who was all about money that sometimes I never even tell you certain things that biblically you might need when it comes to finances. No, I thank God. I think I got 19 Stella Awards now, but when I didn't have nothing, a dude by the name of Jabari Johnson won New Artist of the Year. I inboxed him and said, what's your cash app? I sent him $150, and in the line I wrote, by this time next year, I'm going to be, see, because I understand, see, this is what you need. This is why Chick-fil-A bless. This is why certain business, crazy as they are, still be blessed, because they got a biblical principle that when you honor God, that's why you'll never see me spend a million hours on an offering. I can't get people to do what God can't get them to do. It's like, no. We spend 50 minutes singing. I'm going to spend 50 minutes preaching. Then we spend seven seconds on, God bless you. If you're going to give, give on your way. We love, God bless you. You know what I discovered? If it's his will, it's his bill. I'm going to do my part. So for some of you, you shouldn't. You getting serious about your plan before you honor God ain't the move. You getting serious, God, I need you to show me a sign because I'm going to move to another state. Don't say that without honoring him. Pastor Mike, I really feel God calling me your, to your church. I'm going to tell you something a pastor will never tell you. Before you do that, pray. Why, PMJ? Because I want you to be sure that God's calling you to a shift so you can walk in and not look back. See, I, I don't care about a filled room. Can I ask you a question? You watch me online for six months in an empty room. Does what you see now look just like how it looked without nobody in the room? I don't do this for clout. My name ain't on the building. You don't see a sign that say Michael D. McClure Jr. Senior Pastor. No. This sanctuary beautiful. Kids wing beautiful. Who want to go see my office? It's a fold-down table and one of the old chairs from the other church. Because when I'm sitting in my step, no, let's take it. Make sure the kids got this. Make sure I don't need it. Come on. Let's stay focused. I need so-and-so. Because I've got a principle. Honor God. And watch God honor you. I want to pray. Can you stand with me? I'm going to send you home. Can you stand with me? Father, I pray right now, not just for it, I pray for them. Because God, I pray right now, some of us have mastered fighting the devil. 
We master fighting haters. We keep failing at fighting ourselves. The stuff that we wrestle with, the insecurities that constantly scream at us. So God, in this moment, I ask that you give us the necessary spiritual tools to be who you called us to be. God, as the pastor of this church, I repent for every person in this room and online. I repent on behalf of them. For every place in our life, we tried to make something happen without talking to you first. I repent, God, because there's certain stuff I know you called us to, but like Gideon, we came up with excuses. But God, I speak that day is over. We are about to walk in all you called us to be. I ask that you bless every entrepreneur. I ask that you cover and keep every mother, every father. God, I send up a special prayer to all my teenagers. They wrestle with so much, God. Social media and teen pressure. And God, they growing up fast. They seeing more than they ever seen. God, I ask in this moment that you would guard their hearts, guard their minds. God, I pray a special prayer right now. I ask that you would give us 300 solid men in our church who don't just come to church but are committed. God, I got so many young athletes and so many young teenagers who just need guidance. Maybe dad's not in their life. God, I call men right now so we can be the change they need to see that they won't have to look on a block for anything. They won't have to look online for nothing. God, I pray right now for every sister, God, that she's a Proverbs 31 woman, virtuous and filled with favor. I come against anxiety. I come against depression. God, I, I come against double-mindedness. I come against, God, the need for reaffirmation after we get the affirmation. That, God, we can't just keep asking you for signs because the signs you've given ain't what we wanted. So, God, give us the ability to trust you like never before. Devil, I know you're listening. You're eavesdropping. And you're going to continue to dangle opportunities in front of us that are nothing more than traps. They're going to pull us out of God's will, pull us out of our blessed place. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray for another level of discernment. God, help me to see me the way that you see me. God, I thank you for what you're doing. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Can you clap your hands if you love Jesus, man? Oh, my God. Listen, I know you got to go before you leave. I just want to tell you how much I love you and how much I honor you. I also want to tell you thank you for still being patient with us. We still figuring this out. Was it a little smoother today coming in and getting out? Was it a little smoother? It's a parking lot in the back right now. We had to stop construction on it. Uh, Shelby County wanted to make sure the drainage could handle all that it was going. So we've been doing our inspections and all that. So once they give us that green light, we're going to finish that. That's going to give us more spaces. Also, I'm excited about this. Did anybody park in the apartment complex across the street? Anybody park in there? All right, you can't park over there no more because um, the owners of the building told us they didn't like a whole lot of cars, okay? All right. I'm lying. We bought that too, y'all. That's ours too, y'all. We got. We, <laughs> that's ours too. That's ours too. So no. So we're in the works now of finishing the contract and all that on that. So we're just super excited. What's my vision for that spot? To everybody watching online, we have hundreds of people come from out of town. Let me see who here from out of town today. Anybody? See, look. Where you from? Y'all, my crew. I know where y'all from. What about you? Atlanta. What about you? Mississippi. So here's my dream for that property. It's 96 bedrooms. It was a dorm. Every bedroom has its own bathroom and everything. I want to pimp that ride and make it almost like faith-based living. So when you come in from out of town, you ain't got to get in no hotel. You just go to your church, check in. Where are you staying at? I'm staying at the church. I'm going to knock on the door. Do you need any towels? No. So that's, that's my dream. I mean that so I got so many plans, so many visions to all of my trainers, 
Uh, you're going to be hearing us re reach out to you. We got a whole football field out there in the back. If you ever need to need, use it to train your people and you need a spot to call home for your athletes and stuff, get with us here at the church. We'll get you a waiver, put you on the schedule. It was so dope to pull up the other day. They was having chili to practice out there, football practice out there. So that's what we want to do. We want to be a light for the community. We're also working on some spaces we have downstairs. My heart is for those to be incubators. So let's just say some of my entrepreneurs, you say you got a good meeting that's coming up and you want to impress people. We want to have these offices set up and you just tell them, well, meet me at my office. And then you walk in there and stunt like it's your office. Then I look and say, now go, go on, on, get out of here now. It's stunting, go on, on now. You're using it too much. So we just got a lot of vision. We just thank y'all for being patient with us. We love you so much. Please, please keep me in your prayer. Ask that God keep me grounded, keep me holy, humble, and hungry. Uh, always, if you don't mind, just every now and then you think about your boy, just say, God, keep him, man. God, keep him. I'm always asking for your prayers. I'm doing all I can to be all I can to so many people. I'm stuck between a lot of covenants. I got a covenant with that girl, then I got a covenant with them five kids, then I got a covenant with the church, then I got a covenant with all this other stuff. So if y'all don't mind, just every now and then, just say, Lord, cover them, keep them, bless them, protect them, pray for his mind, pray for his body. I love you so much. If you're giving, you know how to give. You can text I rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950, or maybe one of my members said, Pastor Mike, I'm old school. I need an envelope. I think it's an envelope in the back of the seat, uh, or if you need one, I don't even know if we got an envelope. Jesus, do we got an envelope? Anybody? Do we got envelopes? Amen. All right, so listen, somebody somewhere here got an envelope and a cereal bowl. Just put, that's the offering bowl. Just put your offering in the cereal bowl on your way out. We love you. Thank you guys so much. Do me a favor if you don't mind. When you go pick your children up, who got children in Children's Church, please just tell them, say, hey, thank y'all so much. I really want to make sure they feel loved and supported. It just means the world to me. God, I pray a special prayer. Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. I'll see you next week right here. We are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You know, yes, we always God. pray and expect God mm -hmm. to show up. Uh, and we understand in this vision series, we're moving from expectation to yes. execution. And I believe one of the things we have to do is thank God when he shows up the way he shows up. We Always. believe God, we pray. Mm -hmm. And what another awesome worship experience. What another powerful word yes. uh, that is. If it's blessed you the way it's blessed me, and you mm -hmm. say, you know what? I felt something. God is tugging at my heart. Yes. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to become mm -hmm. a part of this Rock City family. You can do so by texting HOME yes. to 28950. Mm -hmm. That's HOME to 28950. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we talked about it earlier, Jay Ness, how we're able to reach so many people yes. because of the faithfulness, the because commitment. of the support, mm -hmm. the commitment to giving. Uh, exactly. How can they give today if they're giving? Hey, you can text I rock and the amount you wish to give to 28950. This is good ground. Good ground. This is where it's going to Ooh. grow. Yes. So we need your support. Yes, you don't give to a church when you get to Rock City. You, you give, give through a church. Through a church. So help us be the hands and feet of Jesus and continue to reach so many people yes. by being generous and by uh, sowing your seed and being faithful in your giving. Yes. Now, family, don't forget tomorrow morning, yes. 721 a.m., it's Devo Energy. Energy. That's right. We're going to be locked in. We're going to talk about how you can apply this word yes. we got today. Today, yes. this word all week long in your daily life. You're going to hear some incredible testimony. So right. make sure you set your alarm, set the notification, whatever you got to do for Devo Energy in the morning, Monday through Friday, 721 a.m. Central Standard, Standard Time. Time. Family, we love you. We thank God for you. Yes. God continues to blow our mind. He's doing more. Every He's exceeding our expectations. Exceeding. God, this is a season of not just meeting our needs, right. but exceeding our needs, exceeding our expectations. God, mm -hmm. you can blow my mind. Blow my mind anytime. Do what you anytime. <laughs> so listen, fam, let's continue to pray for one another, continue to right. pray for our pastor, lady, first yes. family. Uh, we love you so much. God bless you, and until next time, peace.